Hello and welcome to Making Sense of It All. I'm your host, Ani Asoyan. Today we're diving into the canonical linear model from a fresh perspective, focusing on the intuitive relationships it captures in the monetary policy transmission mechanism. We'll discuss how monetary policy influences inflation, output, and exchange rates while highlighting the complexities of the endogenous money creation process. Let's begin. At the heart of the canonical model is the monetary policy reaction function, which determines how central banks adjust short-term interest rates to stabilize inflation and output. The model incorporates inflation forecast-based reaction functions, or IFBRFs, which rely on forward-looking inflation forecasts over the next three quarters. The purpose of IFBRFs is simple yet powerful. They enable policymakers to anticipate inflation trends and respond appropriately without overreacting to temporary shocks. Think of it as steering a car. Gradual adjustments based on what lies ahead ensure smoother navigation. This forward-looking approach distinguishes IFBRFs from backward-looking rules like the traditional Taylor rule, which are less effective in managing nonlinear dynamics. This model offers a simple representation of a much more complex process, the monetary transmission mechanism. In the real world, this process is influenced by multiple factors, but the model primarily represents it through prices and interest rates. However, endogenous money creation adds layers of intricacy. Banks do not simply lend from pre-existing deposits. Instead, they create new money when issuing loans, making the system highly responsive to economic conditions. While this mechanism can drive growth during periods of optimism, it becomes a vulnerability during downturns, as credit contractions can amplify recessions. This interplay highlights the importance of understanding how money creation interacts with the broader financial system. More importantly, central bank policy extends beyond the current setting of the policy rate on the decision day. The most direct channel of monetary policy is not only the decision on the short-term rate, but also the expectations of future policy rates over the short to medium term. Borrowing costs for businesses and households aren't directly set by the central bank. Instead, they are shaped by long-term horizons influenced by expectations of future policy rates. This highlights the importance of the expectations theory, which defines long-term interest rates as the average of expected short-term interest rates plus a term premium to account for risks associated with that maturity. In the real world, financial conditions that matter to households and businesses are interest rates at different maturities. To incorporate this feature, the canonical model employs an effective long-term rate, a weighted combination of different maturity rates such as three-month, one-year, three-year, and five-year rates. We can think of this as government bond yields in secondary markets which serve as foundational benchmarks. Commercial banks, in turn, apply additional risk premiums when offering loans, mortgages, consumer credit, and other forms of lending. These considerations ensure the model accurately reflects real-world dynamics. The effects of interest rate and exchange rate changes on aggregate demand are captured by the output gap. The output gap equation also incorporates how past and expected output gaps influence the current level of the output gap, reflecting the delayed adjustments in economic activity. This is one of the key advantages of semi-structural models compared to DSGE models. Semi-structural models offer flexibility by incorporating observed lag structures and hybrid expectations, making them more practical for capturing real-world dynamics and delays in economic adjustments. Inflation in the canonical model is represented by a linear Phillips curve, which incorporates the output gap and changes in the exchange rate. It also includes forward-looking components, allowing policymakers to anticipate future inflationary pressures. The canonical model, as we've discussed, is a linear framework. In the next episode, we will extend this model by incorporating non-linearities, which will help us address risks associated with what we call the dark corners of the economy, scenarios of severe inflation or deflation that challenge conventional policymaking. Thank you for joining me for this exploration of the canonical linear model. If you found this discussion insightful, please share it with your colleagues and subscribe for more episodes. I'm Ani Asoyan, and this has been Making Sense of It All. Until next time.